Hello and welcome along to this week's edition of HK Direct, where we're looking ahead to a really competitive 10 race card coming up this Saturday at Sha Tin. Here's exactly what's coming up on the show today. The feature race at Sha Tin is the Panasonic Cup, a competitive class one over the 1400 metres, booming delight, Western Express. Got a very good record over the 1,400 metres. Limitless, he's a bit of an X-factor horse. What will we get from him on Saturday? We're also looking forward to hearing from Alexi Bedal. It's a time of year where we get a lot of European riders coming over to Hong Kong for the winter months. And Alexi's back for his second stint this season. Great to say that joining me in the studio, Adam Campton. Adam, welcome to the show. Um, you come from a racing family. You're here in your first season in Hong Kong working with the young members. How have you found things here? Yeah, I've loved it, mate. Um, it's a beautiful place. It's, the racing's great. It's pretty easy coming to the races every week and watching some high-quality horses and the best jockeys from around the world. You've got a bit of a reputation as a, a good judge of finding a winner, so we're going to put that to the test today. When we look ahead to the Panasonic Cup, it's race seven on the card coming up at Sha Tin. Five of the ten runners in the race are nominated for the Hong Kong International Races in December as well, including Booming Delight, a possible for the Long Jeans Hong Kong Mile next month. Magic Legend is his stay mate. Western Express is the Mount of Joe Marrera, drawn beautifully in gate number three. New Asia Sunrise never runs a bad race, racing Supernova runs in this race. He looks like he's been kept fresh for it. Simply Invincible, Limitless, he's only had a couple of starts with the Casper Found Stable, Chad Schofield has jumped on board. Exultant has his first run in Hong Kong. And down the bottom to the lightweight people's night, Karis Teton on board. So let's start off with a look at a couple of these chances and you can give us your thoughts here, Adam. We'll start off with the top weight and that is Booming Delight, who's right next to Western Express. These two coming through group form behind Beauty Generation, who's probably the horse of the season at this stage of things. Yeah, definitely. Um, Booming Delight's a very classy animal. The winner's... Uh, hasn't done anything wrong this preparation. Booming Delight, I thought his run was very good. Uh, I think he was, Karras was trying to get more room, um, but Joe was laying in sort of on the outside. But I loved his last sort of 100 metres here. Really attacks the line well. Uh, this is 1,600 metres, so the back to, but drop back to 1,400 is going to be a worry, and the big weight's a slight concern. But he's had that hard run under his belt, and I think that'll be a telling factor maybe on Saturday. What do you think of Western Express? Yeah, good effort. Um, He's got a good record over the distance. He's going to draw perfectly, get a perfect run behind the speed. and We all know what Joe can do. He'll give him out. No, he'll definitely be there when the whips are cracking. OK, well, you've got a bit of a concern then about booming to like back to 1,400 metres. What does Sam Clipperton make of that? That I don't see as a, as a great negative. Um, you know, he's, he's coming in, he's third up into his campaign now and he should be reaching um, peak fitness. Um, he's running there 1,600 last start was was just sensational. He, um, he tried his heart out as he always does and just got um, just got pipped on the post and uh, look uh, on Saturday he's got to carry top weight which you know isn't going to help and he, and he faces a, um, a tough competitive field but um, you know every time I ride this horse I, I, you know, I always approach the race with utmost confidence. Um, you know, the horse is, is such an honest horse and um, I know he'll be right in the firing line when the whip's cracking. When you look at Sam's record on the horse, eight rides, four wins, four seconds, you know when Booming Delight comes to the races, he's always there to give 100%. Yeah, definitely. They've got a great combination, the two of them. Sam's a great young rider. Horse is up and coming. Uh, there's really not much to knock besides the 1,600 metres, and I am worried about the big weight. OK, well, let's look at a couple of other contenders. We saw Racing Supernova win this race last year. This is his first run for this season. Also the first run for the season for Simply Invincible. Racing Supernova's back here. Race was run at a muddling sort of tempo, where he's Simply Invincible. Had to cover ground, but he was closer to the speed when they turned for home. Yeah, definitely. I really like Simply Invincible's run. Uh, covered a bit of extra ground. He looked like he was going to loom here and sort of put the race away, but he runs out of puff here. You see Nash back on the inside, looking for a bit of room, trying to get up the fence, um, and then we've got 50-50 out wide. He does the rest. Um, simply Invincible, I think it was a good effort, but I really love racing Supernova's final 100, 150 metres. He attacked the line well. He's had a recent trial, winner of the race last year. He's drawn perfectly, and I think he's going to get a great run behind the speed. OK, what about a horse like Limitless? He's a horse who was very impressive with the way that he won over 1,400 metres last season, but he looks pretty quirky. How did you line him up for his first run back? Definitely quirky. Trials have been, I thought, outstanding. 
Uh, he does a lot wrong and that's the major worry with him. I am worried about him, but I do have him in my numbers and I think he's going to run a big race. Uh, just very worried about if he's, the real horse is going to show up, but definitely a very, very exciting horse. He's a former European horse who won the Britannia Stakes over there. We know that he's got ability. One horse we do know that's got ability based on his European form is this horse, Exultant. Let's have a look at him. He's in the blue cap with the silver and black covers. This is going to be his first run in Hong Kong. Formerly raced as Irish correspondent. Does bring some good form from Ireland and also Royal Ascot. Spot on, Ed. Uh, very, very exciting horse. Um, Stable has a big opinion of him. A lot of people are talking about this horse. The trial's good. He was just trying to get a bit more extra room. Matt Chadwick uh, got Sacred Elixir in front. Classy horse, but I love the way Exultant gets to the line. Uh, I think he's a very exciting horse, and I don't know how good he is just yet, but uh, the further the distance goes, he's going to be a, definitely one to be a force to be reckoned with. That was his third and final barrier trial, but also like the look of him down the straight behind uh, Lockheed. Him and Sacred Alexa, when we look ahead to the derby, they look like two likely types, don't they? Uh, definitely, yeah. Two very, very exciting horses. Um, Sacred Alexa, he showed how good he was in uh, Brisbane and also in Melbourne. His first up run was good, and I liked the last 100 metres of his last up run. OK, so a fair way to go for the derby for Exultant. Does he figure in your numbers for Saturday, though? He does. Yeah, he definitely does. My numbers, I've gone with uh, Racing Supernova, Magic Legend, then I've gone with Exultant and then Limitless. Five, two, nine and seven, the numbers for Adam. We'll be holding you to that uh, on Saturday. Hopefully. Let, let's uh, have a look, though, what uh, Alexi Bedell has to say in this exclusive interview with our very own Andrew Lejeune. Alexi, of course, was here last season for a stint and he's back here for more. Profit gave most of these a start and a beating last start. He'll do the same again. Supreme Profit. Alexi Bedell on the board. Bienvenue, Alexi. Must be exciting to be back. Um, was it always the plan after last year to return again? Yes, definitely. Because um, I was lucky to to have um, a lot of support. I had some some good winners, so it was normal to have some hopes to, to the next season and I'm very happy to be back. Tell us a little bit about your, your background um, first, the early years, the, the trainers and owners that you've worked for. You come from a racing family, don't you? So I suppose it was maybe natural to get into, uh, into riding? First of all, I, was, um, I had the, the physical ability because um, I'm, I'm small, I, I look like a jockey, you know, and I'm very, um, I'm very light, so, which is a good thing for Hong Kong. The second thing is, was, I was like my parents. I love horses, and I would like to to do my job with the uh, with the uh, with the uh, horse racing. So it was totally natural. So your dad was a jockey, your mother was a trainer, and uh, you were champion apprentice in France as well, of course. Yeah, yeah, that's true. My uh, my um, my father was a jockey. Now he's retired. He has 56 years old. We used to ride uh, together in the same races, and my brother too. So we are um, a horse family, and my mother, she's still a, a trainer in France. Did you find that when you went back to France this year, did you ride any differently after your time here in Hong Kong? I'm thinking about things like uh, the ride that you gave Unicorn at Happy Valley around the outside of the field. Are those sort of tactics you can employ when you're riding in France as well? They're taking off from the back. Unicorn's the first to go, and he's quickly up outside A Beautiful as they reach the top of the hill. Unicorn's going boldly, still well clear from ensuring. Spicy Shore and friends of Ka Ying, but it's Unicorn to go on and win. Uh, it's a bit different because Happy Valley is, is um, there is nothing you can compare to the other race track. You know, it's it's very special. Of course, in France, it, it gave me something uh, stronger because. When I came back, I was very, um, very quick. My brain was very, um, was very uh, sensitive, you know. So, of course, it's a very good experience as a jockey to come in Hong Kong. You mentioned you had a good season last year, a trio of Class Two wins uh, with Best Ever, Speedy Long Ride, Supreme Profit, all for Danny Shum. Obviously, you want relationships with all the trainers, but you'd be looking to build on that one with Danny this season. Yeah, I, of course. I, I, I was very happy to to work with it, with him. And I would like to thank you because he trusted me very quickly and he, he didn't hesitate to give me good horses and consistent horses in, in good races. So everything was good and I won, so it's good for me. But every trainers are very, um, very good with me and they, they, they try to give me uh, horses every time and, and I hope it's going to be uh, 
okay this time. So you had seven winners um, last season. Do you set yourself targets? You obviously want to try and beat that, but how do you go about, it's obviously starting two months in, maybe makes it a little bit difficult, but setting a target, a goal you want to achieve this time? Yeah, my, my objective is to, to, to win a lot of um, races. Now I know how it works. I know the, the system of handicap races and the different things to do to get some good horses, you know. So uh, now it's interesting for me. And all the best to you as well, Alexi. Hope you have another successful stay. Thank you. Thanks very much to Alexi Bedell joining Andrew Lejeune in that interview. He's got eight rides at him on Saturday, Alexi. Are there any chances there, do you think? Yeah, I think he has a couple of chances. Uh, race five, number four, clear choice. Ran on really strongly first up at Happy Valley. Uh, I think Alexis will really suit this sort of horse. And race ten, number two, Chungwa Spirit, classy horse on his day. And he's another horse I think he'll really suit. OK, we heard in that interview, Alexi used to actually ride against his dad in races. His dad was also a, a jockey. Your father was a jockey. Was there any chance that you were going to be in the saddle at some stage? No, I enjoyed my food too much as a young fella. Um, but no, racing's been in the blood. Uh, I love horse racing and everything about it. But um, yeah, I was lucky enough to have dad. He was a successful in jockey uh, in Sydney and also in Hong Kong. We're nearly out of time for today's show. Saturday afternoon racing coming up at Sha Tin this week. Trackside live coverage starts at 12.30. The Panasonic Cup, the race we previewed, is due off at 4.05. If you go to the website, hkjc.com, you'll also be able to find on Friday night the full preview of the meeting with Andrew Lejeune, John Blance and Paul Lally. And on the day, you can follow all of the action via Twitter at hkjc underscore racing. OK, Adam, well, we're out of time for today's show. Have you found your debut here on HK Direct? Yeah, it's been great. Uh, you've made it a lot easier for me. Hopefully... Uh, Found the punters a few winners on Saturday. Absolutely. Been great having you. Hopefully we get you back on at another stage. We're looking forward to Saturday afternoon racing, then coming up at Sha Tin. But don't forget to join us next week. We've got a big meeting leading into the international meeting. We look forward to joining you then.